if this HIV. HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, is a virus that attacks cells that help the body fight infection, making a person more vulnerable to other infections and diseases. How it spread? It is spread by contact with certain bodily fluids of a person with HIV, most commonly during unprotected sex, which is sex without a condom, or HIV medicine to prevent or treat HIV, or through sharing injection plus equipment. The human body can get rid of HIV and no effective HIV cure exists. So, once you have HIV, you have it for life. But, with proper medical care, HIV can be controlled. People with HIV will get effective HIV treatment can get long for their lives and protect their partners. If HIV is not treated, it can lead to its which it is a fire immunodeficiency syndrome. How is this first found? HIV is a type of lengthy virus which means it attacks the immune system. In a similar way, the senior immunodeficiency virus, SIV, attacks the immune systems of monkeys and apes. Research found that HIV is related to SIV and there are many similarities between the two viruses. HIV-1 is closely related to a strain of SIV found in chimpanzees and HIV-2 is closely related to a strain of SIV found in Sudi Manabes. Did HIV come from monkeys? In 1999, researchers found a strain of SIV in a chimpanzee that was almost identical to HIV in humans. The researchers will discover this connection to prove that it proved chimpanzees were the source of HIV-1 and that the virus had at some point caused species from chimps to humans. The same scientists then conduct more research into how HIV could have developed in the chimps. They discovered that the chimps had hunted and eaten two smaller species of monkeys, which are red-capped mangabees and greater spot nose monkeys. These smaller monkeys infected the chimps with two different strains of SIV. The two different SIV strains then joined together to form a third virus that could be passed on to other chimps. This is the strain that can also infect humans. How did HIV cause from chimps to humans? The most commonly accepted theory is that of the hunter. In this scenario, SIV was transferred to humans as a result of chimps being killed and eaten or their blood getting into cuts or lungs on people in the course of hunting. Normally, the hunter's body would have fought of SIV, but on a few occasions the virus adapted itself into its new human host and become HIV-1. How did HIV-2 get passed to humans? HIV-2 comes from SIV in Sudi Mangabe monkeys rather than chimpanzees. The crossover to humans is believed to have happened in a similar way through the butchering and consumption of monkey meat. It is far rarer and less infectious than HIV-1. As a result, it infects far fewer people and is mainly found in a few countries in West Africa like Mali, Mauritania, Nigeria, and Sierra Leone. When and where did HIV start in humans? Studies of some of the earliest known samples of HIV provide clues about when it first appeared in humans and how it evolved. The first verified case of HIV is from a blood sample taken in 1959 from a man living in what is now Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The sample was retrospectively analyzed and HIV detected. There are numerous early cases where patterns of deaths from common opportunistic infections, now known to be AIDS defining, suggest that HIV was the cause, but this is the earliest incidence where a blood sample can verify infection. Did HIV start in Africa? Using the earliest known sample of HIV, scientists have been able to create a family tree and test tree of HIV transmission, allowing them to discover where HIV starts. Their studies conclude that the first transmission of HIV to HIV in humans took place around 1920 in Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The same area is known for having the most genetic diversity in HIV strains in the world, reflecting the number of different types HIV was passed to humans. Many of the first cases of AIDS were recorded there too. How did HIV spread from Kinshasa? The area around Kinshasa is full of transport lanes such as roads, railways, and rivers. The area also had a growing sex trade around the time that HIV began to spread. The high population of migrants and sex trade might explain how HIV spread along these infrastructure roads. By 1937, it had reached Brazzaville, about 120 km west of Kinshasa. The lack of transport routes into the north and east of the country accounts for the significantly fewer reports of infections there are at the time. 
by 1980, half of all infections in the Arkongo were in location outside of the Kinshasa area, reflecting the growing epidemic. Since when HIV was founded in Malaysia, the first HIV or AIDS case in Malaysia met its debut in 1986. Since then, HIV or AIDS has become one of the country's most serious health and development challenges. As of 2019, the Ministry of Health estimated that there were 87,581 people living with HIV in Malaysia. However, only 77,903 are aware of the status. Malaysia is ranked 7th highest in adult prevalence of HIV or AIDS in Asia after Thailand, Papua New Guinea, Burma, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Indonesia with a 0.45% prevalence rate. According to the United Nations, Malaysia is one of the 10 countries which together accounted for over 19.5% of all new HIV infections in the region of Asia Pacific in 2016. How do I know if I have HIV? The only way to know for sure whether you have HIV is to get tests. Knowing your HIV status helps you make healthy decisions to prevent getting or transmitting HIV. In 1984, researchers finally identified the cause of HIV or AIDS virus and the Food and Drug Administration FDA license, the first commercial blood test for HIV in 1985. Today, numerous tests can detect HIV, most of which work by detecting HIV antibodies. The test can be done on blood, saliva, or urine through the blood test to detect HIV soon after exposure due to higher levels of antibodies. According to the World Health Organization, human immunodeficiency virus HIV affects the immune system and reduces people's defenses against many illnesses and several types of cancer that people with healthy immune system can fight off. HIV virus infects T helper cells, also known as T lymphocytes or CD4 cells, which are a type of leukocytes, white blood cells, that plays an important role in the immune system. Infected people become immunodeficient as the virus destroys and inhibits the function of immune cells. These vital cells keep us healthy by defending us against infection and diseases. The CD4 cell count is commonly used to assess immune function. During the infection process, HIV kills CD4 cells and the body's ability to recognize and fight certain types of infection begins to deteriorate. If HIV is not controlled through treatment and effective testing, the loss of CD4 cells can lead to serious illnesses such as AIDS, the most advanced stage of HIV. In people with normal CD4 cell levels, this infection will be recognized and cured by the immune system. The structure of HIV HIV is referred to as a retrovirus because it functions in a back-to-front manner. Retroviruses, unlike other viruses, store the genetic material in RNA rather than DNA, which means they must make DNA when they enter a human cell in order to replicate. HIV is a spherical virus with a diameter of about 100 nanometers. The envelope is the virus outer shell which is covered in the spikes of glycoproteins, glycoproteins 120 and glycoproteins 41, which allow HIV to bind to the CD4 receptors on CD4 T cells and enter the host cell. The matrix layer is found inside the viral envelope. The virus core or nucleus is housed in the capsid, a cone-shaped structure in the virion center. It also has two strands of RNA, which contains HIV's genetic material. HIV's RNA is made out of nine genes and contain all the instructions needed to create new viruses. Three of these genes, GAG, POL, and ENV, encode instructions for the production of proteins that will result in the formation of new virus particles. The reverse transcriptase, integrase, and protease molecules found in a capsid are essential for HIV replication. These three enzymes are encoded by the viral POL DNA polymerase gene. ENV supplies the instruction for making the proteins that make up HIV's envelope or shell. The structural proteins such as the matrix and capsid are made by GAG. Other proteins encoded by HIV-1 and HIV-2 that have regulatory or immunomodulatory function include VIF, VPR, TAT, REV, and NEF. VPU is another protein found in HIV-1 but not in HIV-2. Likewise, VPX is found in HIV-2 but not in HIV-1. These six genes encode proteins that control HIV's ability to infect cells, produce new copies of the virus, and release viruses from infective cell. The HIV life cycle. Like other viruses, HIV is incapable of reproducing on its own. Instead, the virus attaches to and fuses with T helper cell. 
it then takes over the cell's DNA, replicates itself within the cells, and finally releases more HIV into the bloodstream. The HIV life cycle refers to the process by which HIV multiplies and spreads throughout the body. First step, attachment and fusing. When HIV enters the cell, the process of producing new viruses begins. Attachment and fusion are the two stages of this process. HIV infects immune cells with the CD4 receptors on the surface. T lymphocytes, monocytes, macrophages, and dendritic cells are an example of these cells. The cell uses the CD4 receptor to alert other parts of the immune system to the presence of antigens. When HIV binds to the CD4 cells, the glycoprotein 120 spikes on its surface bind to the CD4 receptor as well as another co-receptor either CCR5 or CXRCR4. The glycoprotein 41 is responsible for fusing the HIV envelope to the cell wall. This fusion process allows HIV capsid to enter the T lymphocytes and release its genetic information. Step 2. Reverse transcription before HIV RNA can be integrated into the DNA of the host cell, it must first be reverse transcribed into proviral DNA. Inside the cell, HIV's reverse transcriptase enzyme converts RNA to proviral DNA. Third step, integration. After HIV RNA is converted into DNA, the integrase enzymes attaches to the ends of the proviral DNA strand and passes through the cell nucleus wall. When the proviral DNA enters the cell nucleus, it binds to the host DNA before inserting the HIV DNA strands into the host cell DNA. HIV remains dormant within the host cell DNA after the proviral DNA has been integrated. This is referred to as latency. The cell is described as latently infected. These cells are not recognized as infected by the immune system and killed off, allowing them to persist for as long as the cell lives. Fourth step, transcription and translation. The infected T helper cell then produces HIV proteins which are then used to generate more HIV particles within the cell. If the cell receives a signal to become active, it will produce HIV RNA. When CD4 cells come into contact with an infectious agent, they become activated. When the cell becomes active, HIV uses the host enzyme RNA polymerase to produce messenger RNA or mRNA. This messenger RNA contains the instruction for the production of new viral proteins in long chains. Long chains of HIV proteins are synthesized from mRNA. The last and final step, assembly and budding. HIV's protease enzymes cuts the long chains of HIV proteins into smaller chains. At the cell wall, these protein chains begin to assemble into new viruses. The virus genome becomes enclosed in a capsid produced by the HIV's EAG protein as it buds from its cell wall. After assembling the new virus, it must exit the cell by breaking through the cell wall. To completely exit the cell and become infectious, the virus must use lipids from its cell wall to create the surface glycoproteins. In the end, it will become mature enough to be the infectious HIV virus we all know. Okay, for the first, what are the symptoms of HIV? Do you guys know? In some cases, people develop flu-like symptoms within 2 to 4 weeks after contacting HIV. This can occur within 1 or more days. The symptoms may include night sweat, mouth ulcer, fever, rush, fatigue, muscle ache, chills, and the last is swollen lymph nodes. However, some people may not feel sick during acute HIV infection. This doesn't mean that you have the disease. Other illness can cause similar symptoms. See a healthcare provider if you have these symptoms and think you may have been exposed to HIV. Okay, for the next one is the impact on socioeconomic. HIV disease not only adversely impacts the health of population, but they also create serious socio-economic problems for individuals, families, communities, and the government in many countries. In terms of individual costs, healthcare is steadily increasing. Moreover, people living with HIV will not only be unable to work, but will also lose their income. They may also lose their skill and the ability to make a living. There is also the possibility of discrimination against HIV positive workers. Also, that of an HIV positive person may have an impact on their family member because they lost a loved one. For the last is the impact of the virus on their emotion. 
HIV can have a profound emotional impact on someone who is diagnosed with it. HIV positive individuals have a higher rate of mental health problems than the general population. The taboo that HIV is only transmitted through sex and it is the result of personal irresponsibility or moral fault that deserves to be punished and can lead to mental health problems such as depression. Depression is a common mental health problem among people living with HIV. In addition, HIV infection can cause personality change in the affected individual. The diagnosis of disease can cause a variety of other feelings in addition to fear. One could also feel ashamed, angry and sad after being diagnosed. How the government control the disease? First, the Ministry of Health MOH and Ministry of Education MOE partnered to produce modules for secondary school teaching students about HIV or AIDS and sexually transmitted infection. Number 2. In 2001, JAKIM gradually introduced premarital HIV screening for the prospective Muslim couple, who the department made screening obligatory. Muslim couple are screened voluntary through clinic run by the MOH. It has had the synergistic effect of decreasing HIV transmission and emphasizes that the purpose is not to prevent marriage but to know your HIV status. Last but not least, Malaysia also made a program which is neither ensuring exchange program and SEP. This program remains on the front line of the harm reduction approach to reduce HIV vulnerability among people who inject drugs. Introduced by the Minister of Health in partnership with the Malaysian AIDS Council in 2006, the NSEP broke new ground in providing direct community-based health care services for people who inject drugs nationwide. Treatment of HIV when we talk about HIV treatment, there is no effective cure for HIV yet, but with proper medical care, you can control HIV. The treatment for HIV is called antiretroviral therapy ART. ART is a treatment that combines three or more medications for several different drug classes. The three medications will be combined in one pill and should be taken one daily. The classes of anti-HIV drug are First is Non-Nucleoside Reverse Transcriptase Inhibitors NNRTIS Nucleoside or Nucleotide Reverse Transcriptase Inhibitors NRTIS Protease Inhibitors PIS Integrase Inhibitors IIS And lastly, Entry of Fission Inhibitors FIS. This treatment reduces the amount of HIV in the blood, also known as viral load. The medication of ART will help keep viral load low and CD4 cell count high. The low viral load is known as viral suppression. Viral suppression is having less than 200 copies of HIV per milliliter of blood. Having less HIV gives chances to the immune system to recover and produce CD4 cell. This will make the immune system strong enough to fight infection. Interesting facts about the virus It's that HIV2 less infectious than HIV1. HIV1 which the most common ones that HIV2 that relatively uncommon or less infectious. HIV-2 is less infectious and progresses more slowly than HIV-1, resulting in fewer deaths. However, without treatment, most people living with HIV-2 will eventually progress to AIDS and die from the disease. Like many viruses, HIV has the ability to mutate and change over the time, especially for HIV-1, where the main type of it has many genetically distinct subscopes. Thus, the HIV can be eliminated or stopped. It never completely goes away. But when doctors have taste the blood taste, if the result be undetectable level, if the level keep in an undetectable level, immune system will grow stronger, 
people that get infected with the well and not pass HIV to someone else. HIV cannot spread through. Uh, we can normally shaking hand, hug and kiss, share our drink and food using the same toilet or bathroom, sneezing and coughing, and mosquito bites cannot spread HIV.